back in the year 2016, a lot of really awful things happened. It was a terrible year. But one of the cool things that happened was the discovery of an exoplanet orbiting the nearest star to our own. Orbiting Proxima Centauri, the exoplanet sits nicely in the star's habitable zone. While this means the planet is at the right distance to theoretically have liquid water on its surface, this also requires it to have an atmosphere to provide pressure, and a rocky surface for the water to sit upon. Because we're interested in any possible alien biology, this water would presumably have to be on the surface, where it was stable and interacting with a habitable atmosphere. These are quite a few assumptions about this nearby exoplanet, so let's take a look at the hard data. Proxima Centauri b, as the planet is called, is a rocky planet about 1.3 times the mass of the Earth. So right there, you have your rocky surface and the gravity that would theoretically support a nice, comfortable atmosphere. But unfortunately, Proxima Centauri is a small, variable star. It's small, which means the habitable zone is really close, so the exoplanet orbits really closely to its star. And it moves really quickly, completing an orbit in about 11 days. This suggests that the planet is tidally locked to its star, which would be problematic for life. A tidally locked planet would mean that one side is perpetually scorched by the sun, while the other side is perpetually hidden in darkness. The temperatures would be extremes. Water on the hot side would boil away, while water on the cold side would be frozen into ice. But a new study has made high-resolution models of the surface of Proxima Centauri b, and their data suggests that it's possible for a liquid water ocean to be sustained, assuming, of course, that it exists within an atmosphere of sufficient density. The critical detail here is heat flow, and the researchers found that the atmosphere and the liquid water ocean could theoretically exist on the surface of the planet if they were able to transfer enough heat, consistently and perpetually, between the hot and cold sides of the planet. Essentially, the atmosphere and a water ocean would be liquid mediums for heat to be transferred from the hot side to the, to the cold side, so this would simultaneously cool the hot side down while heating the cold side up, and you would have a, a more temperate global temperature, a more temperate global climate. If this is the case, the research implies that one of the closest exoplanets to Earth just might have a temperate climate and a liquid water ocean. This would be despite the fact that it's tidally locked, as a sufficiently thick atmosphere and a sufficiently large body of liquid water could transfer a sufficient amount of heat across the surface, and thus perpetuate the temperate conditions that keep that water around. Although this exoplanet would still be quite hostile to life as we know it. The temperate regions on the cold side of the planet would extend mostly across the equatorial areas, where water would be the most stable and heat could be most consistently transferred. Regions of higher latitude on the cold side would still be extremely cold, and much of the hot side would still be punishingly hot. While this new research is really interesting, it's important to understand what's going on here. They're using models with a wide range of variables, constrained only by the hard facts that we know about Proxima Centauri b. The problem is that we really don't know that much about it yet. We don't have that many hard facts at all. So a lot of this stuff is just conjecture of theoretical possibilities. It's all working within this somewhat loose framework of the hard facts. As we learn more about Proxima Centauri b, we'll build more constraints on top of our theoretical models, and the potential habitability of the planet will be determined with greater accuracy. I'm going to read you a few passages from the paper, and you can see how they're discussing all of these theoretical variables, and what it would mean if we turned the knobs this way or that way. The researchers say, and I quote, Climate models with static oceans suggest that Proxima b could harbor a small dayside surface ocean despite its weak installation. We present the first climate simulations of Proxima b with a dynamic ocean. We find that an ocean-covered Proxima b could have a much broader area of surface liquid water but at much colder temperatures than previously suggested, due to ocean heat transport and or depression of the freezing point by salinity." Unquote. They also say, quote, For an evolutionary path leading to a highly saline ocean, Proxima b could be an inhabited, mostly open ocean planet with halophilic life. 
A freshwater ocean produces a smaller liquid region than does an Earth salinity ocean, unquote. So they're basically saying here that if Proxima B had, uh, had liquid water oceans that were about as salty as Earth's oceans, then uh, it could sustain a large liquid water ocean. And the salinity would drop the water's freezing point enough so that it could sustain itself on the cold side and help carry heat that way. So that's pretty interesting. Now lastly, because Proxima Centauri is a variable star with periodic increases and decreases in its luminosity, the exoplanet would be exposed to shifting radiation levels. As far as we know, this is not a very good thing for life because it means that their, their environment is that much less stable. About this, the researchers say, and I quote, Simulations of Proxima Centauri b may be a model for the habitability of weakly irradiated planets orbiting slightly cooler or warmer stars. For example, in the TRAPPIST-1, LH-1140, GJ-273, and GJ-3293 systems. Unquote. So at the end of the day, the researchers didn't find life on another planet. But they did play around with the known data to create models of a planetary climate that would allow for liquid water, and thus, potentially, for alien life. As I said, we'll need to learn more about the planet to refine our understanding, to make our understanding more sophisticated, and to determine how habitable the planet really is. But for now, with the data that we do have, we can say that it's within the realm of theoretical possibility that complex alien life swims in the salty oceans of Proxima Centauri b, under the variable radiation flux of a small, dim star. <laughs>